This podcast is part of the Batman Universe Podcast Network, hosted by the BatmanUniverse.net. Check out everything related to Batman and the entire Bat family at the BatmanUniverse.net, including news and original content related to comics, movies, television, merchandise, video games, and more. Also, check out some of the other unique podcasts that TBU has to offer. Consider supporting this podcast by becoming a patron on Patreon. Even $1 can go a long way in supporting this content that you enjoy. Look for a link over at the BatmanUniverse.net to offer your support now. And now, on with the show. Chris and Jerry, and I want to read more bad. No heroes can compare. I want to read more bad. I see the Cape Crusader in so many tones. I have to hear the show until my craving goes. I see a shelf of books and want to read more bad. With villains on the loose, we have to call the bad. So many story arcs, I don't know all these trades. But with this podcast, it just always makes my day. Hello, and welcome to this edition of TBU's Bat Books for Beginners, episode 211. My name is Jerry. And I'm Chris. And we are your hosts. On Bat Books for Beginners, we will examine story arcs with Batman and related characters. We'll give you the historical background of the book, break down the plot and the art, and give you our opinions so you can decide for yourself if they're worth a read. Today's Bat Book Chris and I are covering is Batman Arkham Reborn. So, Chris, tell us about this book. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jerry. <laughs> Jerry, did I detect a little bit of Rolling Stones there? Oh, yes, a little bit of Rolling Stones from Painted Black. And folks should know, this was done, the lyrics were done by Chris. Well done, Chris. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Jerry. And you, you did a masterful job with that. When I pitched it to you, I thought, it, could this be doable? And you, you said, yeah. And uh, it, it turned out great. Uh, I can, oh, one of your best efforts, Jerry, with the music oh, on that one. You. I really, really am so floored with uh, your musical prowess. And that, that was good. Uh, thank you. Well, you know, the lyrics that you put together, it all just flowed right out. It was perfect. Well, great. I hope, well done. I hope the listeners like that one. Yeah, me too. Well, thank you very much, Bat fans, for spending a bit of your day with us today. Once again, Batman number 188 remains on the shelf. <laughs> and today we're looking at Batman Arkham Reborn. Batman Arkham Reborn is a 144-page, full-color, softcover trade paperback that was published in August 2010 and had an original cover price of $12.99 U.S. And this appears to have only gone through one printing. This trade paperback reprints Batman Battle for the Cowl Arkham, which was in 2009, that was a one-shot, Arkham Reborn from 2009, which was a three-issue miniseries, and Detective Comics number 864 and 865. All of those issues were cover dated in 2009 and 2010, and had individual cover prices of $2.99 each, except for Detective Comics issue numbers 864 and 865, which were cover priced at $3.99, and those had backup features of the question, and presumably they had a higher page count. If you wish to obtain a hardcover, tangible version of the story trades were going around for thirty dollars through secondary wow. amazon vendors yes but mycomicshop.com at the time of this recording had a copy just under eight dollars and that might be the route to go as back issues were yeah. around to cover price to slightly higher to cover price for the individual issues uh, for a creative team as per usual i'll go with my 
memory, and some online resources. Our writer is David Hine. David Hine is British and was born in 1956. His notable works include Silent War and Bulletproof Coffin. He's also written for Ezreal and various Marvel Comics and Image Comics titles. Our artist is Jeremy Hahn. Hahn has worked for Image Comics, IDW Publishing, Oni Press, Devil's Due Publishing, Top Cow, and Marvel Comics. Since 2008, he has worked for DC Comics, and he is best known for his work on Berserker and the title Battle Him. Now, over on Amazon.com, this has a rating of 3.5 out of 5, or 4 out of 5, depending on which entry you're looking at. I saw two. And over on Goodreads.com, this has a rating of 3.73 stars out of 5, based on 725 ratings and 40 reviews. However, here's the big question. What did Jerry and I think of this book? And for that, you'll just have to stay tuned. And with that, I shall turn it back over to you, Jerry. Well, thanks, Chris. So we're going to talk about this story after a few messages from some of our friends. Hello. Do you enjoy movie scores? Do you like science fiction? Do you like fantasy? And do you like movies? Uh, uh, everything's under control. Situation normal. What happened? Uh, it has slight weapons malfunction, but uh, everything's perfectly all right now. We're fine. We're all fine here now. Thank you. How are you? Well, I have a podcast for you. Soundtrack Alley. It's a podcast where I take you on a journey through the time of my childhood and beyond to give you a glimpse into the world of movies, science fiction, fantasy, and other films that touch me on a personal level. You'll also enjoy interviews from film composers from famous movies from the past or even current times. Enjoy the interaction I have with guests on my show every so often, and check out other shows that share in guest spots. So sit back, relax, and let the soundtrack world wash over you, and check out Soundtrack Alley. You'll love it. Welcome back. Here is the story of Batman Arkham Reborn. Arkham Asylum has been destroyed, and Jeremiah Arkham wants to rebuild it. He remembers checking on the inmates in the good old days in the asylum. Humphrey Dumpler, Victor Zaz, Scarecrow, Ivy, Killer Croc, Clayface. Yeah, they're fine. Oh, the good old days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good old <laughs> But then he went to check on three special inmates. He calls them his beauties, and they are too dangerous to interact with the other inmates. Alessio Morandi, who had his face ripped off as a child and replaced with a featureless blank visage that he paints faces onto. Mirror Man, who stepped out of the jungles of heaven. Doesn't speak except to repeat words back at you. He's always gazing at his beautiful self in mirrors. And finally, there's Hamburger Lady, a woman so ugly that it makes all that gaze on her face insane. Everyone except Jeremiah, of course. Of course. Jeremiah remembers what happened in the recent past. He mysteriously was directed to plans for a new asylum that his long-dead Uncle Amadeus Arkham had designed. However, the asylum was taken over by Black Glove and Jeremiah was kicked out into the street. Joker poisoned the asylum, and the patients had to be removed. Black Mask freed them all in transit, and then an explosion destroyed the asylum. Jeremiah d returned to the destroyed building to retrieve Amadeus's plans and check on his beauties. They're fine. Jeremiah rebuilt the asylum into a modern facility with his uncle's plans. 
One of his assistants, Alice Sinner, sat in on some of his sessions with patients. Alice had been raised in a cult that she said committed suicide, and only she survived because she didn't drink the poison. Alice has a secret agenda, though. She remembers meeting Black Mask at a costume party, and he recruited her for a mysterious purpose. One of the patients at Arkham is Raggedy Man, a guy that wore patchwork clothing and killed with a can opener. They gave him an appropriate costume and maybe an inappropriate can opener. Alice knows that Jeremiah has some special secret patients, though. Now, things are not going so well in the new asylum. There was food poisoning that almost dissolved Clayface. Mr. Freeze's environmental cell had a glitch and he had to be moved to an ice bath. And Killer Croc's cell had a flood which almost drowned him. Drowned Killer Croc? Yeah, that's bad. Raggedy Man escaped from his cell and he went to the labyrinth that all good lunatic asylums should have. Someone directed him to a mock-up of the room he was trapped in as a child, complete with cans of peaches, which he hates. Jeremiah went looking for Raggedy Man and found a joker stick with his face on it. He tells Alice that he can trust only her. But she goes and visits Black Mask, who's trying to break Jeremiah. She goes to the asylum, gets on the intercom with voice-altering software, and tells the inmates that she's in charge of the asylum. And she encourages the inmates to riot. Which, guess what? They do. Jeremiah is at a Gotham fundraiser and is informed of the riot. The GCPD shows up and Batman gets things settled down. Alice sends down some nasty bugs to Raggedy Man. The bugs get eaten and infest your body. He needs to get them out of his stomach using the can opener. He dies in the process. Black Mask is happy with Alice's work. She says that she doesn't only want to break Jeremiah, she wants the asylum. Batman calls Jeremiah and tells him about a secret portion of the asylum, a second Arkham Asylum built without anyone's knowledge. How is that possible? Batman tells him something about Alice and the death of her parents. Jeremiah confronts her, and she tells him the true story of her parents' cult suicide. She was in love, and her parents condemned her, saying their love was unclean. Her betrothed betrayed her, and prayed for forgiveness. So she poisoned the cult, like you do. Jeremiah went to call security, but Alice attacks him with Raggedy Man's can opener, but he only gets a face scratched before she is taken by the guards. She is now a patient. Jeremiah knows someone else was pulling her strings, but whom? His beauties say they know who, and point him to a jester-like character. Joker? No, Joker's evil twin, the Jester. Imagine Joker having an evil twin. Wow. Jeremiah talks to Jim Gordon and tells him everything is under control at the asylum. But we get the idea that old Jeremiah has cracked. One of Arkham's patients is Hugo Strange. But Jeremiah now has become a patient himself. The other patients believe him to be Black Mask. Weird. Jeremiah doesn't take much guff from the other inmates. He threatens their loved ones, which definitely keeps them in line and keeps them from killing him. During the recent nastiness in Gotham, Black Mask implanted a bomb in a business guy's chest with the help of Hugo Strange. The guy set up all the stocks of the Gotham businesses to collapse. The bomb will go off without Black Mask's code. Batman meets with Jeremiah in Arkham, and he gets the code, and it turns out that Jeremiah was Black Mask, but has no recollection of it. Batman tries to goad Jeremiah into becoming Black Mask again. He tells Batman about his three beauties, and he takes Batman to see them, but it turns out that they were all figments of his imagination, including the Jester. Even the food he brought to them was left rotting. Jeremiah was wacky. They showed him the video footage of his encounters with his beauties, which was basically him ranting to an empty room. Jeremiah breaks the jester stick and it releases a toxin that puts him in the hospital. The toxin creates madness and he had been absorbing it for years. 
In the hospital, after taking the antidote, Jeremiah tells Batman about the past. Hugo Strange had wanted to replace Batman, and he sent him to see Joker, who gave him the Joker stick. The toxin in the stick allowed Strange to manipulate him. His emergence as Black Mask was controlled by Hugo Strange, and Jeremiah also acted as the jester, leaving himself the clues to find the Arkham plans. He now remembers the terrible things he did as Black Mask. He gives Batman the code to shut down the bomb in the guy's chest. They use it, but the guy blows up anyway. They were too late, probably. Maybe. Maybe. Jeremiah is still an inmate, and Batman leaves with Alice, who has recently been made director of Arkham. What could go wrong? Batman does not approve. Alice six Victor Zaz on Jeremiah. But Jeremiah is ready for the maniac and somehow gets Victor restrained and carves his initials inside Zaz's eyelid. Afterwards, Jeremiah and Alice kiss. They both know that down deep, Jeremiah is the powerful black mask. The end. So Chris and I are going to talk about our feelings for the story after these words from some of our friends. When you talk about comics, does it sound something like this? Look, you can't put the Superman number 77s with the 200s. They haven't even discovered Red Kryptonite yet. And you, uh, you can't put the number 98s with the 300s. Lori the Morris hasn't even been introduced. Or maybe it sounds a little more like this. You think Mighty Mouse could beat up Superman? What are you, cracked? Why not? I saw the other day he was carrying five elephants in one hand. Boy, you don't know nothing. Mighty Mouse is a cartoon. Superman is a real guy. No way a cartoon could beat up a real guy. Yeah, maybe you're right. It would be a good fight, though. Hello, I am the constantly caffeinated Clinton Robison, and my comics discussions can go to both extremes, but generally fall somewhere in between. On the Coffee and Comics podcast, I will review comic stories and other comics-related topics that can be enjoyed over a cup of coffee. So pour the coffee, or other beverage of choice, and join me on the Coffee and Comics podcast, available on iTunes and coffeeandcomicspodcast.blogspot.com. Welcome back. Okay, Chris, what'd you think? Jerry, I didn't have a lot of notes on this. Let me get some trivia out of the way here. Uh, well, first off, let me say this. Mm -hmm. Th definitely not for kids, uh, <laughs> this book. And yeah, sometimes yeah. Uh, I, I don't know if we put a disclaimer out before uh, books that we look at, uh, especially with bat books for beginners. But I, I would mm -hmm. say this is definitely not for children. Uh, Got to be yeah. a, probably a, a good good. Uh, Preteen, teen, at least I would think, or more so would be on uh, the teen side for this one. Uh, Jeremiah Arkham first uh, appearance <laughs> was in Batman: Shadow of the Bat number one. Go figure. Uh, way back in 1992, I wouldn't have guessed. Mm. Uh, it was that late in the Batman lore. Uh, mm -hmm. Arkham Asylum yeah. first mentioned in Batman number 258, which is a 100-page issue that came out in the mid-70s that had Two-Face in it. And that was a uh, mm -hmm. nice, nice book. Uh, and it was just a mention. Uh, yeah. I think Denny O'Neill wrote that book. This is the second incarnation of uh, Mirror Man. The first one was a little uh, short bald chap who was just obsessed with uh, finding out who Batman was. And he wore like these square room glasses. Uh we had a Kate Spencer cameo in this, best known as the character Manhunter, which was in a mm -hmm. title written by Mark and Dranko that I highly recommend. This really had a Silence of the Lambs feel for me, and I, I don't know if that's necessarily mm -hmm. good or bad. Uh, the characters almost seemed, w w what could we do just to shock the reader with, <laughs> with each successive uh, person we're introduced here? And I don't know if I necessarily it was a little tough for me to swallow but on the second pass I, I got it uh this was a series i remembered when it initially came out yes i had mm -hmm. memories with reading this one which I, I haven't been able to say on recent podcasts so i appreciated that the art was good mm -hmm. I, I think serviceable is sort of a derogatory term but i think it was slightly bit better than that but i guess my question was with this being jeremiah kind of top heavy mm -hmm. i had to ask myself is this a character that's sustaining my interest throughout this whole uh, book? And uh, mm -hmm. yes and no. I, I think it was more so yes than no. But uh, for a while, I, I just don't know if I saw some depth with this particular character as I would have liked. I, I don't know if the, we, we've mm -hmm. gotten any insights or revela revelations with respect to his character. And I don't know if uh, 
any other readers felt the same way. And I think that's a question I'm going to say for you, uh, mm. Jerry, as we uh, do a deeper dive into this. What were your initial impressions? Well, I like Jeremiah. Um, and I thought, so I'm, I'm going to kind of break this into pieces because of how I kind of am thinking about it. I think it was kind of cool that he was Black Mask. But the story danced around kind of the main plot points. You know, it, it wasn't really, um, you know, we know Black Mask was up to a lot during the war games period. And I, I assume that, you know, a lot of this was at least around that time. Um, it's kind of, you, you get the idea. Oh, well, Jeremiah is cracked. He's gone insane. He's doing all this stuff to himself. I, I just think that just these stories in itself, it loses the context. It's more interesting in context of all the rest of the stuff that's going on, um, in the, in the bat books right now, you know, in this period of time. And just by itself, it skips around too much. Like, you know, he was all of a sudden now a, uh, inmate in Arkham where, you know, they didn't get us there. You know, that just happened. Um, the, you know, I get the idea that, you know, Black Mask is really dangerous, really powerful. Um, but, you know, having Jeremiah Arkham overpower Victor Zaz and carve his initials in his eye lid. I mean, Victor Zaz is, is a pretty tough guy. And, you know, I, I kind of had to just kind of suck that one up. <laughs> yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, agreed. Yeah, I, I think you're right about uh, calling the Silence of the Lambs. This is very much a horror story, and I think it does better for me personally when it's, you know, spooky labyrinth and, um, you know, mysterious uh, inmates that only he sees and stuff like that, more so than I'm going to cut bugs out of my stomach and I'm going to carve my initials in your eyelids. And I mean, that's just gross. <laughs> so I like the spooky horror asylum part, but I don't like all the visceral, the yucky stuff. Um, I wish the story was a little more self-contained. Um, I think I appreciated it more than somebody like a true beginner that maybe just be picking this up because I knew of some of the other stuff that's going on in Gotham at this time. But I think as a standalone, it's a little bit confusing. Um, how about yourself? What'd you think about it? You know, it's funny you mentioned that, Jerry, because that's one of the things I thought about, but didn't necessarily put in my notes. And you know, just by chance, when I was over on, uh, I don't know if I was on Goodreads or Amazon or somewhere along the lines when I was compiling the uh, rating list, that, that somebody else commented mm -hmm. on the same thing. And it's, it's, it's very interesting that you hit on that particular key point. So, you know, apparently you're not mm -hmm. alone in your thinking with that. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's... I, I, this is a side of Batman that we don't get a basically a, a, a look or an examination at. This is a supporting character, mm -hmm. which I think deserved some attention and some light on, but I don't know if it overall made a compelling uh, work in a, mm. with the series with respect to something that would grab a reader's attention throughout. Right. I, I think you're right. It, I think it would have been better if it was a little more self-contained. Uh, but, you know, as a standalone, it's just, you know, a, l a little too confusing, a little too confusing. Mm -hmm. Before I forget, I do want to mention some things with respect to the art. I, I don't think we mentioned anything, at least I didn't. Uh, yeah. I thought Han was really good. Yeah, I think I did mention earlier it was serviceable. I think my favorite piece, mm -hmm. though, was one of the covers he did with uh, uh, Arkham Reborn number two with the jigsaw puzzle. And I think that might have been used on one of the trades, but not necessarily the mm -hmm. one that was uh, limited to the U.S. edition. I, I just don't know if I have much more to say about it. Yeah. I mean, we, we never saw these characters again, to my knowledge, which, which really blows me away. And yeah. it would have been nice to see something more of a confrontation uh, later on. Uh, yeah. We went to all the trouble of, you know, putting some players uh, on this chessboard and, 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 there, and no one's made a move yet, you know, later on and down the yeah. road. So yeah. I, I just don't, I just don't know. Um, it wasn't, terribly bad Han, uh, Han's artwork was good Hein is certainly a capable writer I think some of the characters voices were certainly there but mm -hmm. mm, I, I just don't know with this one if I could recommend it or yeah. where I land on this one Jerry did you have any other thoughts well I'm trying to think of well, a score just thinking <laughs> that you know it was <laughs> it was too bad 
that, um, you know, they went to all the trouble to create the beauties, right? These three characters and yes. oh, they're figments of your imagination. They're gone. I think that it, it could have been more powerful if, and maybe they will, maybe they do do this later. And, um, you know, we're just not there yet. And I just don't recall from the era, but, um, if they somehow inform Jeremiah's, you know, work <laughs> somehow that, you know, they really became important, like aspects of his personality that encouraged him to do things. They just, you know, here's these three, you know, pretty interesting characters that are kind of a secret, uh, Jeremiah's secret. And then it just poof goes away. They're gone. They're figments. We, d- we don't see him again. And I think that's a, um, kind of a, a curious editorial decision in my opinion. I don't know. Yeah. Do you, did anything stand you, out? How did you feel about artwork? those three? Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I think, you know, well, with with, with respect to Mirror Man, uh, you know, this was a, a new incarnation of a, of a villain, which we haven't seen the last yeah. of probably, you know, in our last episode, we covered a, a different incarnation of Getaway Genius, and now we've got an updated yeah. version of Mirror Man, which regrettably doesn't even stick because i think once we get to final crisis there was a third incarnation of the character so you know go figure um yeah n- neither stood out to me one reminded me of a flash villain and and the other one was just gross for gross's sake i guess so i yeah there, 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 yeah. I, I really was trying jerry i really was trying but i i, I just could not get <laughs> really uh did. geared up invested in this for for whatever reason you know i, I at first I, I thought this was uh summarily dismissive for gross for gross's sake try to give it another yeah. chance couldn't quite do it i i tried but i i, I couldn't uh nothing yeah. really resonated i was going to ask yeah. you jerry did I you have anything lo- with respect to the oh i'm sorry I was just going to say, uh, with respect to the art, I thought that um, when they got Raggedy Man all dressed up, I think I he looked kind of cool. You know, he had kind of a patchwork quilty thing over him. Um, that looked kind of neat. Um, other, but that was really the the most uh, impressive thing I thought from the art standpoint. Did you see anything that that really drew your eye? Only that it was reminiscent of a Flash film called Ragdoll, and you know, with with that similar oh, okay. kind of yeah, motif. Yeah. Uh, but but beyond that, I really didn't find anything unique or special with respect to the character. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, you've had time. You've had time to think of it. <laughs> Where would you bring this in with a rating? And is it a must read, or would you recommend it? No, 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 oh gosh, I, I need a more minute to think this over here. But let me t- t- toss a coin here. Uh, well, no, I was, I'm, I'm, I was kind of between a three and a half and a three. You know, just trying to give the story a benefit of the doubt. Now, I, I use mm-hmm. the scale as basically two and a half as an average read. Th- this. For the most mm-hmm. part, I have to confess, held my interest. I did like the the cameo. I did like. Uh, mm-hmm. The the takes with respective villains, and I think this is exploring. A, ba- a piece of the Batman universe, if you will, that does not necessarily get its due per se. So let, mm-hmm. let's 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 you know put something out there with the, that looks at Arkham and and Jeremiah. Fine, fair enough. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say I'm going to give this a 3.0 though out of five. This is slightly above average. It, okay. it wasn't enough that uh, it held my interest and sustained it throughout. Where I'm going to you know just fall mm-hmm. short of a three and a half. <sighs> If you like lore, I think there is a segment of Batman fans that really groove on the villains, the mm-hmm. unique villains, the uh, psychopath villains, mm-hmm. the the mm-hmm. the C and D list villains, which are my favorite. I think there's a segment that really gets into the villains, and if you're kind of a villain person, I would say I'd recommend it for that reason and that reason only. I don't know if I'd say it's a must read. Mm-hmm. For for a Batman fan or or that, and I'd only recommend it in the sense if you're really into the obscure Batman villain, uh, go for mm-hmm. it. I hope that made sense, <laughs> yeah, Jerry. What, what was your take? Would you, I, I would like your rating, and would you say this is a must read, and is it a recommend? Well, I would bring this in where you did at a three three point oh. Um, I think there are good story elements here. Um, I think that it's not really coherent as a, a standalone story. You have to remember that it really wasn't a standalone story at the time. But, you know, in this podcast, we do, we are looking at this as a whole. So I think that would definitely be a problem, uh, with somebody going out and buying this trade. You have to fill, to read other books to fill in the gaps. Um, I, I think, yeah, you know, 
There are probably a lot of people that do like, uh, Arkham stories, you know, the, the, this kind of, uh, creepy asylum. And I think it works in that uh, aspect. Uh, it's a horror, like kind of a gross out silence of the lambs horror kind of thing. And if you like that kind of thing, well then, yeah, you know, I'd recommend it. Um, but you know, for myself, uh, I don't, I, I did like a lot of the struggles that Jeremiah Arkham was going through, the psychological things and, you know, kind of realizing that on the one hand, um, Alice thinks that she's putting one over on him, but in reality, his kind of, you know, psychological, uh, twin is Black Mask, who's having her do this. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, so I would, uh, you know, if it's, uh, you're down to the bottom of your read pile and you've got this sitting there. Yeah, sure. I'd recommend you pick it up and flip through it, but <laughs> um, I wouldn't spend $30 on it. That's for sure. No, no. Uh, and I, and if it was in the quarter box, you certainly could do worse. So, uh, oh, yes. I guess. <laughs> yeah, there you are. I'm kind of in the middle there to the extremes, aren't I? Uh, boy. <laughs> this was an odd one. This was an odd one, but yeah, nonetheless, I'm glad was. this was something we got to look at. Yeah, me too. Me too. I liked, I liked a little bit of the black mask piece. I thought that was kind of interesting. So. Yeah, and I thought the covers were unique on this one as well. Mm. But the Detective Comics covers, they, they really did. The artwork oh, yeah. uh, was really, really nice. Yeah, great. So, Chris, this is not the only podcast that you do. Uh, you've been doing uh, a lot of a lot of stuff on Batgirl to Oracle, and you've also been doing uh, the the TBU Comics podcast. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, thanks. Right? Yeah, let's. I'll start with the latter. You know, uh, Dustin uh, took a quick vacation, and I got to fill in with uh, Ian and Steph once nice. again, and I had a lot of fun, and I really appreciate them having me on, and we really, really got to explore a lot of fun books, and it was a great mm. discussion. I, I really have to commend uh, Ian and Steph for the uh, being very gracious for having me on, and Dustin for letting me sit in. And not sure. only just did we talk about uh, Batman uh, and Detective Comics, but we also uh, discussed Curse of a White Knight, Last Night mm. on Earth, uh, the final issue of The Batman Who Laughs, and Batman Street Secret Files. So... If you're a fan of the current mm. Batman issues, uh, by all means, please go over to check out the Batman Universe comic podcast. I, I hope you yeah. like it. I don't think you'll be disappointed. And we nah. do a lot of deep dives. We even had fun with the question of if you were a henchman in, in the Batman world, you know, in Gotham City, who, would, what villain would you want to be a henchman for? So, Ooh. yeah, Jerry, I'll be curious as to your answer. I'll, I'll give you a moment to think about it. But oh. yeah, that was a lot of fun. And I, as you said, I'm also on the Batgirl to Oracle podcast. Uh, Stella just wrapped up an episode that I think should be out at the time this episode's released for the August one. That comes in just under four hours as she's going to test drive one Donovan Morgan mm. Grant as a, as a co-host, so I can't wait to hear it. And I do a segment that Stella has dubiously called Chris's uh, Cornucopia of Curiosities, where I review the <laughs> Batman Adventures comic book title based on the animated series from the 1990s. And I also have a segment within a segment called Nightwatch, where I look at the current Nightwing title from a nice. shipper's perspective. And boy... Things got pretty hot and heavy with Nightwing number 62, folks, and I, I had to uh, uh, fan myself a little bit. Uh, and Oof. I hope you uh, check that one out as well, and I really, really enjoy it. Now, Jerry, I'm going to let you mm. give your plug, but hopefully you can give me an answer, too. Now, oh, yeah. I want to know where your Twitter handle is, because mm. I know you do a lot of things. And I also want you to talk about Monster Kid Radio, because oh, yeah. I know you're covering some EC oh, horror yeah. comics that I really, really like. And, you know, uh, a couple episodes ago, you mentioned uh, Jack Kamen did a piece. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, don't fall asleep on Jack Kamen. My gosh, no, he was a talented yeah. artist in his own right, too. He he yeah. could really, really draw. You know, I know He's, you think horror, you think Graham Ingalls, and, and you know, there's some Jack yeah. Davis in there. But Kamen was uh -huh. really a really good artist. And, yeah, sometimes yeah. I don't think Kamen gets his due with respect to the other uh, EC artists in the day. So, Jerry, uh, can you tell us where totally we can find agree. you on Twitter? And can you talk about Monster Kid Radio? And can you also tell us what uh, <laughs> henchperson you'd be, like to be a villain for? <laughs> 
<laughs> you bet. So you can catch me out on Twitter at Professor Frenzy. Uh, I, I'm out there. I tweet weekly comics. We talk about indie comics a lot. Uh, I tweet about my adventures of uh, going through dark shadows. And uh, we live tweet horror movies at the hashtag Svengooly on uh, Saturday nights. That's a lot of fun. Um, I do this segment, as you mentioned. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, on Monster Kid Radio, I cover an EC horror comic story. So it's one story every issue. And it's a lot of fun. And I think yeah, I, I came in is I don't know if I would say he's my favorite of those artists, but I sure think he was great. Um, I know Jack Davis gets a lot of the focus, a lot of the attention, but I kind of think that I'm kind of lean towards Cayman with his work. I think he was a genius. Um, and Cayman, me, I think if, if really... I was going to be a henchman, oh, yes. go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say Cayman is really, really solid. I know we're getting off on a yeah. tangent here, but, you know, Feldstein did some really, really gorgeous sci-fi covers. Mm -hmm. Elder, you know, I remember for Mad Magazine, but occasionally he'd sure. also do a horror story. Jack Davis, mm -hmm. you know, he was kind of an every man with respect to everything. But Cayman yeah. was just solid up and down. He could yeah. come us, every, do every kind of genre. And just those That's eyes, cool. the way Cayman would draw yeah, eyes yeah. were very, very expressive. And they were very evocative of, of capturing a mood in a particular horror scene. So great, mm -hmm. great call, Jerry, with that. And now, Oh, yes, go you. ahead. <laughs> uh, if I was going to be someone's henchwoman, Catwoman's. Come on. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> yeah, I think she's uh, she's hysterical, and uh, I, I, I definitely would, you know, want to give her a hand. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. Yes. So now uh, folks I, should I, not I forget you know, even to, to – ch go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say, yeah, you know, and, uh, if you, can you imagine if you were, if you're on the 66 TV series, you know, you did, you oh, have yeah. Eartha Kitt and, uh, uh Julie oh. Newmar. So wouldn't that have been great, huh? Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been awesome. Uh, so now folks should not forget to check Chris and I out on the Professor Frenzy show. So we've done 66 episodes of the Professor Frenzy show, at least by now. And uh, this is the podcast that Chris and I have on indie comics and other pop culture topics. And we've just been having so much fun reading some great, great comic books out. So check that show out. Search on iTunes for the Professor Frenzy show. Yes. Now, we got a few comments with respect to our last episode, and we really appreciate uh, everybody who had a chance to chime in. Uh, this was the one where we talked about uh, Batman uh, number 700 in respect to that. Uh, we heard mm -hmm. from... Rob Myers, and I got to give a shout out to Rob. Oh, he's on Twitter at drummer wow. Rob uh, Ten, and he's the host of the Everyone Loves the Drake podcast. Great, great show. He's doing mm -hmm. uh, retrospective yeah. with respect to uh, people's Tim Drake memories where they first encountered mm. Tim. Uh, the feed for that on Twitter is at E L T D podcast again. E L T D mm -hmm. podcast, and that's a great, great show. So shout out to Rob, You're doing a not marvelous job with your episodes there. Thank you so much. Also want to give a yeah. shout out to Ian, who, uh, graciously had me on and he commented, solid episode for some quite confusing books. I think the split <laughs> time, uh, from the 700 book was very ambitious, but the tie-ins yeah. to Final Crisis actually decreased my, uh, impact for the Batman RIP storyline. Mm. Yeah, Ian, I, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, Jerry, you yeah. concurred that things seemed quite to be all over the place. So, you know, some of the parts yeah. were very, very good, but, uh, you countered that, yes, some of the other pieces didn't quite gel. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And let's see. We also heard from our good friend Green Lantern HG at Green Lantern HG. Awesome. And, you know, I, I was sort of, uh, you know, I have my feelings on Damien and, uh, Green Lantern HG said a very, very good episode, guys. <laughs> Chris, I hear ya. There's a lot of people not liking Damien. I myself have become a fan of his. In fact, the Belfry was my favorite part of Bats till it got disabled. Oh. Mm, a frown emoji with a tear. <laughs> I, I, and I have my homework thanks to Jerry, because I got to find the songs. Yeah, Jerry, uh, you know, you really do, really do a great job with the songs on that one. And that one uh, was uh, oh, one I know I had heard the tune for, and, and I, I really um, appreciate you uh, cluing uh, us and the audience in with that one. And again, what we looked at last time was uh, Batman, Time and the Batman was what we covered on the last episode. Yeah, yeah. So thanks, guys, for chiming in on Twitter, and we really, really sincerely appreciate your feedback. 
Yeah. Well, we got a few likes and retweets on Twitter with our past episode. We heard from our friends Darren and Ruth at Warler oh. Worlds, and their Twitter feed is at Warler Worlds. That's a fan podcast devoted to the comic creations of writer and artist Mike Grell, including the Warlord, John Sable, and Green Arrow. It's part of the Rad Adventures Network. We heard from Ian Miller at IBM Miller. And again, shout out to the excellent job he does on the Batman mm. Universe comic podcast that he also co-host with Dustin and Steph. It's a marvelous show. Please check it out if you're not mm-hmm. doing so already. We heard from our good yeah. friend, Sean. Sean is at Secret Wars and Beyond podcast, and he's on Twitter at Sean42AZ. Marvelous stuff that he's doing there with respect oh, yeah. to all the shows and everything he guests on. Great, great person to follow on Twitter. We heard from Selling Out Show at Selling Out Show fine podcast we yeah. want to give a shout out to our good friend dave at lava hog at lava hog again rob myers at drummer rob 10 long box of darkness at dark long box it's a podcast and blog awesome. about horror and comic book form it's hosted by our friend herman on twitter at into weird we heard from hey it's weasel skull at weasel skull he's a long box crusader oh, yeah. be sure to check out everything over on the Long Box Crusade. You won't be disappointed. It's a lot of laughs and it's a lot of fun. We heard <laughs> yeah. from Green Lantern HG at Green Lantern HG once again. We also heard from new fan of the show, Booker Official at Booker underscore official. And mm-hmm. we also heard from Edgy Kid at Alarek <laughs> underscore is underscore Kevin. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks so much, gang. And that's all I had. And if by chance I overlooked you, my sincerest and deepest apologies. Please let me know on Twitter at BTO and Bat Books or let Jerry know at Professor Frenzy, and we will be sure to mention you on our next episode. Thanks, Chris. Well, that's all we have for today. Please join us next time where Chris and I will cover Red Robin, the hit list. My name is Jerry. And I'm Chris. And thank you for listening to Bat Books for Beginners. I hear Chris and Jerry and I want to read more bad. No heroes can compare, I want to read more bad I see the Cape Crusader in so many tones I have to hear the show until my craving goes I see a shelf of books and want to read more bad With villains on the loose we have to call the bad so many story arcs, I don't know all these trades But with this podcast, it just always makes my day 